Hello Super Users, so in the last module, we ended with three large questions. First, is it really worth spending five minutes to only save five seconds with a macro? Second, aren't we going to need many difficult keyboard shortcuts to have a lot of macros to be efficient? And third, how are we supposed to memorize all these different keyboard shortcuts? And so in this module, we're going to answer all three of those questions. We're going to learn of a really neat way to make the keyboard shortcuts easy to use and a lot easier to remember, as well as learning some really useful macros that will definitely save you more than just five seconds. So let's get started with another quick question. You see, we have all these different macros that deal with working with layers. So wouldn't it make sense if we could somehow group them together? It turns out that yes, we actually can group these together. We actually already know how to do this because when we first started off, we created a group over here for all of our finale macros, but we could actually create as many groups as we want and we don't just need one group for finale. So let's go over here and create a new group using this plus sign. And we're gonna call this finale layers layers because we're going to put all the finale macros that deal with layers in this one group. Available in all applications. We only want it to be available in these applications. Add an application finale. Remember if you don't see finale there just make sure finale is open and it will appear there. And we can go back to our original macro group and just copy and paste all these different macros into the new finale layers group. Of course right now it seems like it really only helps us with organization but it actually does a lot more because we can turn this group into something that's called a palette. Let's see how to do it. So back in the group, so you have to actually select the group, click out of the macro and select the group. Instead of, you know, saying, you know, available in this application, available in all windows, always activated, we only want it to be activated at a certain hotkey. So we're gonna change this to shows palette for one action when, and we wanna set the hotkey to be Whatever you want, I prefer Control Z. This is actually Control Z, not Command Z. So let's see what exactly this does and move back into Finale. So if we go over here into Finale, and if now we hit Control Z, we get this little pop-up. This is a Keyboard Maestro thing, and we can use this to actually run each of the macros. So we can either click like Layer 3, you can see right now we're in Layer 1, click Layer 3, and we move to Layer 3, and the palette disappears or we can use this to move things between layer one and layer two. So if we go back to layer one, to control Z to pop up the palette and then move to layer two, it moves it to layer two. But not only that, we can actually use the palette to run any of the macros inside the palette with their keyboard circuits. So control Z and we can now do command shift one, that keyboard circuit, to then run that macro, and it runs. But even cooler, now each of these macros in the macro group, because it's only gonna be shown for one action whenever we do this key press, none of these will actually work until we show the palette with the hotkey. So if I were to try now to move it to layer two using shift command two without the palette, it doesn't work. I need to then do the palette and now do shift command two and it works. So not only is this an organizational thing, but it actually means we can have a bunch of different palettes over here. Each are going to be shown with a different hotkey, and each are going to have a certain set of actions we can use, which also means we can now reuse keyboard shortcuts. So instead of, you know, option one, we can actually just say one. Instead of, you know, option two, we could say two. Instead of option three, we could say three, and so on and so forth. Instead of option four, we could say four. You can also do easier keyboard shortcuts for move to layer one. So instead of shift command one, I use D, and instead of shift command two, I use S, and swap layer one and two, I use A. You can use whatever shortcuts you want, but these will only be active when the layer is active. So we can have hundreds of keyboard shortcuts with really simple keyboard shortcuts, and because the hotkeys are shown in the palette, we don't have to memorize any of these. We only have to memorize the palettes that we created just the keyboard shortcuts for the palettes. And I can guarantee you that after quite a bit of time of using Finale with the palettes this way, you'll just happen to memorize all these keyboard shortcuts, but you don't need to at the beginning because we can go over here, select this, move to layer one with just D. And just for some cleanup, in case you are not seeing 
the keyboard shortcuts when you have the palette up, you can fix it either by changing the palette style by just clicking on the palette style here, or the better way if you want to change it for all the palettes is going up here to Keyboard Maestro of Preferences. And then Palettes, and you could change the default palette style here, and make sure that you have the trigger selected. If not, it won't show the trigger. And for whatever settings you change here, all future palettes will look that way. And then you may afterwards have to come back here to this first palette and just say return it to the default. And congratulations now, you've built your first palette with Keyboard Maestro that you can use in Finale. So in the next few lessons of this module, we're going to go and create many more palettes to help you really take advantage of using this feature with Finale. Can't wait to get started, and I will see you in the next lesson.